Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this month's third, third Sunday at Three Concert Series. Joining us today is a wonderful group of musicians that I have the pleasure to work with regularly. So let us welcome Stephen Bedencourt, Danny Warwick, Kaylee Judd, and Mia Jamona. And I am your host and also a performer, Laura Bote. Well, everyone, we made it through the fall semester of 2020. Danny, how did your semester end up for you? Oh, it was busy. This was my first semester of grad school, but I survived. That's great. And Mia, how about you? And got those grad school applications going, I know, just like I did. Yeah, it was crazy up until December 1st, um, but now I can sort of relax until auditions come out. For sure. I totally understand the feeling. And Kaylee, this was your last semester as an undergrad here at Loyola. Congratulations on finishing your undergraduate career. Thank you. It was a stressful semester to be finishing up with, but I'm glad it's over. <laughs> huh, you know, I think we all are in a way, but as we continue on. Uh, and then Steve, how about how about you and your students and your uh, work at Loyola? How did that all turn out this year? You know, it was a little um, little stressful, but I think all the students did well in the, the new environment of fall semester. We all finished strong. Um, we got to hear some students that studied virtually that played in last month's concert. So I thought that was a pretty big success and uh, it was fun. We, we made it, we made it through healthy and safe and uh, looking forward to spring semester, thanks. For sure, thanks everyone. So then Steve, you are actually first up on today's program. So could you please tell us a little bit about the piece that we're going to hear from you? Sure, thanks Laura. Um, the piece I'm playing is one of Bach's Schubler chorales named after the engraver and publisher Johann Schubler. And it uses material from Bach's Choral Cantata number 140, uh, which was written for the Sunday of the church year that happens right before the beginning of Advent. But since the scriptures in the Sundays of Advent and the end of the church year are similar, uh, oftentimes we hear this chorale and this melody um, happen in the season of Advent. So uh, this piece is based on an adaptation of the Cantata 140, uh, the fourth movement, the middle movement, which is um, a piece for a solo singer. It's also based on the melody of the well-known hymn, Zion Hears the Watchman Singing, heard frequently in Lutheran settings, but also done in other um, denominations as well. It's a favorite hymn of mine, and I enjoy playing it for, the, uh, for Mass in the Chapel at this time of year. Awesome. Thank you, Steve. Now let's enjoy some Bach.
That was awesome, Steve. Thank you. Now, these next two pieces feature Loyola student Danny Warwick. Danny, welcome. Hi. Can, could you please share a little bit with our audience today why you chose the Handel? Yeah, uh, well, every year to prepare for the Christmas season, I listen through the Christmas section of Handel's Messiah. I take out my score and follow along and everything. Um, this piece, The People Who Walk It in Darkness, is one of my absolute favorite arias. Handel really gets to play with the, the light and dark in the composition, so it's a joy to perform or to play with the chiaro and the scuro in my singing. For sure, this is definitely one of my favorite arias from Messiah as well. And then your second piece today is by Mahler, which is a real treat, and I quite enjoyed accompanying you on that as well. So what's the challenge in singing Mahler's music for you? Yeah, well, you know, Mahler isn't really known for his vocal music. He's more known for his orchestral and his uh, symphonies. So the challenge here is really negotiating the complex uh, vocal line, the narrative and the story and the emotions with the underlying uh, accompaniment. Uh, which for the score we used was a keyboard reduction because it was originally set for orchestra. Um, so I'm very thankful for you uh, and for the people at the chapel to allow us to use the wonderful organ at Madonna della Strada um, so that we can really bring this piece to life. Um, this piece, Ich bin der Welt, I've been handeln gekommen, is uh, one of my favorite art songs. It's really personal text. Um, for me and for many musicians. Uh, the very final line is, Ich lieb allein in meine Liebe in meinem Lied. I live alone in my love in my song um, after being rejected by the world. Um, so this song for I think for many at the end of such a challenging year um, will really touch home. Thank you, Danny. Now let's listen to these great next two pieces sung by Danny Warwick.
Next up on our program is Kaylee Judd. So welcome, Kaylee. It's great to have you on the program today. Could you tell us a little bit about learning this piece and why you enjoy playing it? Hi there, Laura. It's really good to see you. Um, yeah, so this piece is in Dulce Jubilo, which is a pretty common Christmas song. Um, it's actually one of my favorites behind In the Bleak Midwinter, which is pretty funny because in a survey of British choral masters, um, they rank the exact same way. So I guess I'm not very creative, um, but it was really good to learn it just because I'm pretty familiar with the tune. It wasn't very challenging, except for this beautiful motif in the right hand. Um, it's very sparkly and moving and adds a little interest to a piece we're really familiar with. For sure, it is. A, I definitely would agree with the word sparkly there. Um, so would you say the process of recording music pieces like these, is it easy or is it stressful? Maybe a little of both. I found, I found it pretty stressful. Um, you know, live music is an ephemeral thing. We just have to enjoy it in the moment and appreciate that it happened. And unfortunately, we can't really do that right now. So I'm really grateful for the opportunity to share music with others in a time like this when we can't really um, use live music the same way. But the beauty of recording and also the downside is that it preserves music for a long time and um, everything gets preserved, even the little mistakes that you make. Um, so there is a lot of pressure, but I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be able to save music for others to hear in the future. For sure. I think we can all agree, all of us, we've done quite a bit of recording uh, these past several months. So thank you, Kaylee. And now let's move into Christmas with this work by Schrader. Mia, welcome. Hi. Uh, we had rave reviews of your handle heard in last month's concert, so congratulations on that. Um, could you share with us a little bit about what you like about this piece by Bach from his Magnificat? Yeah, um, so it's part of the Magnificat, as you said, which is usually performed around Christmas time um, and usually has like a Baroque orchestra. Um, this aria is particularly beautiful, I think, because of the chromatic passages, they're really haunting and they kind of stay with you. And he also, Bach is so specific about how he sets the text to um, the music. So um, you can tell how much energy he's put into this aria. 
And um, also there's this really big explosive chorus that comes in right when this aria finishes that we don't get to hear for this performance, but it's really a jolting experience if you watch the Magnificat. Yes, and so then following this excerpt from the Magnificat, Mia is going to present a delightful Schlafendus Jesus Kind by Wolf, accompanied by Steve. Um, so Steve, what is it like to accompany a piece written for orchestra on the organ? Oh, well, it's, uh, there's a lot of things to take into account. Um, first, I listen to original orchestral recordings for clues on what stops to use on the organ. Um, and to be very careful about that, the organ in the chapel is extremely powerful. So little goes a long way and can really cover up the voice or pretty much anything in the chapel. Uh, but Mia came really well prepared. So it was super easy to accompany her and actually really enjoyed the, the handle, the Mozart we did. Um, this piece and the Bach uh, were just awesome. She she came, did her stuff, uh, and it was really easy. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful really to Mia uh, for all of her musicianship as well. It's wonderful. Now let's enjoy these next two selections.
Thank you, Mia and Steve. It was wonderful. Laura, you are today's closer with Craig Phillips' rousing and rhythmic toccata on the hymn tune Antioch, known to many as Joy to the World. Can you share with us some things to listen or watch for as you play this piece? Absolutely. Well, as you said, it's very rhythmic. So that's probably one of the most interesting and fun things about this piece. So it takes the hymn to enjoy to the world, which is usually like in the meter 4-4. Four, four. And a lot of the time in this piece, it's in 7-8, which, you know, sounds quite a bit different when you take away that one eighth note. Um, so that's really fun. And then it also really just goes through a lot of different keys and chromaticism, just really exploring and developing the joy to the world theme, the descending scale pattern that we hear in that hymn that all of us know so well from Christmas. So it's really just a fun piece that I really enjoy playing. And it ends with just this awesome sparkly chord that just sounds really great in the chapel. Thank you, Laura. And thanks to everyone on our concert today, Kaylee, Mia, Steve, we would also like to extend a very special congratulations to Kaylee, who's graduating this semester. Kaylee, thank you for all of your work and assistance at the chapel and in the music department. You'll be missed. Thank you so much, Danny. I appreciate it. I'll miss you guys too. A Merry Christmas to all and to a new year filled with hope.